Hello everyone and welcome to Blackpool. This is the world famous Blackpool Tower right behind me. And what am I doing in Blackpool? Well, it's a long story, but I've always wanted to cycle the coast of Britain, the length of the entire coast of Britain, and it's thousands and thousands of miles long. So every year a handful of people will cycle the entire British coast in one go, and it takes six, seven, eight months, sometimes more, depending on how fit you are. Um, I'm not gonna do that, I don't have the time. Um, I'm not fit enough either to be honest with you, but I'm a working man and I don't have the time for that So I'm gonna have to do it in sections small sections and then keep going back home um, In between anyway the first leg Starts right here in Blackpool the Las Vegas of the north Right at the foot of the Blackpool Tower. I think that's quite fitting. I used to come here a lot when I was a kid and I love Blackpool I love how Cheesy it is. <laughs> I just love it. I love everything about it. So what I thought is I'd start here and I'd do my first leg up towards Gretna Green. I'd aim for Gretna Green on the Scottish border. You never know, I might get to Fleetwood and then uh, get the train back. Um, but probably not. Hopefully not. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny Blackpool. It's a lovely warm day, but it's not too hot. Perfect for cycling. Right, so here we go. My journey around the coast of Britain is going to happen over many different legs. Now this is the first one and I'm going to be sticking as closely as I can to the Lancashire and Cumbrian coastline. Now I'm kicking the whole thing off at the giant pin in the map that is Blackpool Tower. And over the course of three days I'll be heading northwards all the way to the Scottish border. Blackpool was originally a very sparsely populated place. Now because it was so far away from any borderlines or lacking any large population centres the Lancashire coastline in general was settled very quietly by invading forces such as the Romans and the Vikings, who nevertheless liked looking out onto the Irish Sea. Now it wasn't until the 18th century when a private road was built to the village that wealthy people began to arrive at Blackpool to bathe in the sea, a fashion at the time which was said to cure diseases. Slowly Blackpool became a town complete with hotels and bowling greens but by the middle of the 19th century, however, almost overnight, it would transform into a major seaside entertainment resort that attracted a very different sort of crowd. So an interesting fact about Blackpool is that in the census of 1801 the population was only something like 473 people. It was a tiny little settlement, a tiny little village. Um, and of course it had all these um, wealthy people coming every now and again to sunbathe, like I said. But in the 1840s um, the railway line came to Pultonley Fylde and to Blackpool and that opened up the resort for the working class people, the, the mill workers of Lancashire. Uh, to come here on a bank holiday or over a weekend if they, if they had the time um, to make a special trip out to the seaside and that's when uh, seaside resorts up and down the country actually around that time stopped being places for wealthy people and started being places for ordinary people and it continued to be a working class um, seaside resort all the way through the 19th and 20th centuries and today is a thriving seaside resort um, it's struggling with its identity but it's kind of stuck in the 80s, the 90s um, and it wants to become a bit more modern but at the same time it's got that kind of timelessness about it and it's knocking down a lot of the concrete facade of the, the seafront but I think that adds to the charm of the place uh, because I think, because I grew up with that basically so <laughs> to me that is Blackpool and it'd be a shame personally if they got rid of all that um, but it is kind of a time capsule and that's that's why Blackpool is so interesting and people do come from all over just to go there At one time it was the UK's number one uh, seaside resort and now it's still up there it's still it's still kind of going and it, it, that's a good thing <laughs> Right, 
so I've just uh, made it to Fleetwood. I'm just entering Fleetwood and I've been into a headwind the whole way. The wind's blowing south, brilliant. Um, so I'm knackered already and I've barely started my journey. Um, that's a cool building there, just on the seafront there. I'm not sure what that is. Anyway, this is Morecambe Bay and it's massive. It looks like you could literally walk across there. Um, but it is, Morecambe Bay is one of the most dangerous parts of the UK it, because the tides are so unpredictable and when the tides come in, they come in really quickly and people have been caught out there and died. There's not only that, but there's several rivers that empty into Morecambe Bay and they all kind of change course as they um, cross the sands there. You can't really predict them, they do just switch. So it's not advised to go out there. Um, it's one of the most dangerous parts of the UK, but it's massive and today, Hopefully, I'll be ending somewhere around Grange, over Sands, or somewhere over there. Hopefully, the wind doesn't pick up more <laughs> and blow me back to Blackpool. So I just got the ferry over from Fleetwood to here, which is not end, which is the other side of the river here. Um, and it's just saved me about 45 minutes of cycling, a good few miles of cycling all the way around the estuary here to get to this point. It's not cheating, it's not cheating. It's a ferry, it's only a little ferry. It's only a little ferry. A couple of quid, two minutes, brilliant. Uh, <laughs> and it's good timing as well. I was just cycling past uh, when they were um, casting off. Right, so I've had a good couple hours cycling there. Uh, it's been tricky, um, I've been cycling into a headwind. That's one thing I realised I don't like about cycling is riding into a headwind. Nasty, nasty stuff. Number two is swarms of flies. Uh, for some reason I've just, I've gone through millions of swarms of flies and I've been carrying them around uh, the Lancashire coast with me. Hundreds of them just riding along for the ride. Um, so that's two things I don't like about cycling. Anyway, <laughs> suddenly realised, look at this. Playing with the big boys now, that's Haysham Nuclear Power Station over there. Those two massive buildings over there. I don't know if you can see the ships as well. That's Haysham Port, obviously. And this whole area here is just full of containers and wagons and lorries. Um, and it's, um, it's a beautiful, natural place to come. It's full of concrete. But anyway, this that's the nature of coastlines, isn't it? It's, it's full of industry and it's full of beautiful, natural wonders. Anyway, over there, you can. I don't know if you can see that land over there from where you are <laughs> but there's a, th a thin sliver of blue over there grey and that is the southern peninsulas the higgledy piggledy peninsulas of Cumbria and right over there is Barrow and if all goes to plan I'll be over in Barrow tomorrow anyway today I'm going to have a bit of a rest and then I'm going to crack on and in Haysham town centre the summer I want to show you <laughs> These cliffs at Haysham have been settled by people since the last Ice Age, but the remains of an 8th century chapel now occupy the site. Most notably are these stone tombs cut into the rock and there is nothing else like them in the rest of the British Isles. Now you might recognise them better from the album cover of Black Sabbath's Greatest Hits.
Right, so I'm done for the day. I'm stopping at a campsite in Silverdale. Um, I didn't make it to Grange Over Sands. I didn't even make it. Um, well, I just made it into Cumbria, actually just over the border into Cumbria. Um, so I'm all set up, got my tiny little tent. Um, and that's me for uh, tonight. So that's the, the first day over with. I don't know how many miles I've done today. Um, I'll see you in the morning, see where we can get to tomorrow. And I've just uh, took a tiny detour down the Ulverston Canal and it's this long straight canal here it's only one and a quarter miles long and it's very pretty um, it's disused now um, it's one of the shortest canals I've ever come across to be honest uh, but it's nice to tick it off the list anyway look at this old lock here beautiful the old um, frame there just rotting away in the water um, so this canal was built in 1796 um, to bring much needed goods into Ulverston for the trade, for the industries and to export a lot of things as well. So sea going vessels come from Markham Bay over there, um, come through here all the way into Ulverston town centre and they exported a lot of things, uh, iron predominantly, uh, but also gunpowder um, and Ulverston played a tiny little part in the slave trade because what had happened was ships from Liverpool slave traders from Liverpool will come to Ulverston, um, buy gunpowder, sail to Africa and then in the, the circle of slave trade they would then go to Africa, sell the, the gunpowder to uh, an exchange for slaves and then of course go to America and sell the slaves for profit. So Ulverston has a little hand in, in that little shameful bit of British history. Um, anyway, uh, it's still a nice canal, <laughs> I must admit. So I'm just in a little village of Rampside. I've left Overston now. I've been rained on as you can see and I'm on my way to Barrow but I'm at Rampside um, and I've just come across this awesome looking uh, lighthouse. This is Rampside Lighthouse and it's just amazing. It's such a, <laughs> a strange curiosity along the coast. Um, it's bloody huge uh, to be honest with you. Um, yeah I love it. Just look at these ladders here and there's that door there. I kind of want to open that door but um, I can't because people are looking um, but yeah it's just that's amazing I really want to go there but maybe another time so where I am now is Rower Island um, and I'm at the southern tip of the Furness Peninsula now I've just come across a causeway uh, as you can see that over there that island there is Peel Island and there's um, a bit of a castle on there now that was built 
um, by monks in the 14th century to protect their little um, shipping, um, their little goods uh, industry from pirates and raiders and things like that. Um, and at the time it was the biggest soul structure in the northwest of England. Um, and the island actually gets its name from that castle because the word peel means like fortification. Uh, anyway, a bit of history for you there. Uh, you can get a, a ferry, you can see right there, from this little this massive building here all the way over to the island. Interesting fact about the island as well, um, the landlord of the pub over there, the ship in, has traditionally been given the name of King, the title of King. So over there, there's a king somewhere in a pub. Next up is the large town of Barrow at the end of the peninsula. Now Barrow rose to prominence during industrialization when large deposits of iron ore were found in the area. In came a railway connection to Lancashire and then sea trade shifted from Rower Island to the new harbour at Barrow. Now with plenty of iron and coal, Barrow began manufacturing steel and its deep yet sheltered port made it an ideal place for using that steel to make ships. Now shipbuilding increased in the early 20th century, what with there being two world wars and all, but suffered nationwide in the 1960s with increased overseas competition. Today Barrow's shipbuilding is dominated by BAE Systems and specialises in the manufacture of submarines, although its future could lie in a more sustainable technology offshore. For me, the thrill of heading into Barrow was visiting Walney Island and finally getting to see the sea. I made it to Walney Island at last um, and this is it, look at this. This is the first time I've been able to actually go within touching distance of the sea. Everywhere around Morecambe Bay over there, the sea was just way out across the sands. This is the first time it's actually been right there. Um, it's actually very beautiful. Look at this. Stick hand in the Irish Sea, there you go. There you go. Oh. Stick my feet in the Irish Sea as well, just for a bit of good luck. Um, yeah, it's a coastal bike ride I'm doing. And finally I feel like I'm at the coast. <laughs> so I'm going to crack on, like I say, times against me. I can't explore Walney Island anymore. Um, so I'm going to push on next, back through Barrow, and then I'm heading north. It's not the last time I'm heading south though. There is another little bit um, towards Millen later on today. I'll be heading south again. Uh, but after that, finally the road north goes north. So leaving the shipyards of Barrow behind and saying goodbye to the sea once more, I head north along some particularly nasty A roads, skirting the river estuary, until I head south one last time into the little town of Millen. There you go, end of day two, and another cool boat on its side there. Um, I'm in the, I'm in Millen. Uh, this is the end of day two. Um, I'm camping at a campsite in Millen. It's a beautiful campsite. Um, and you can see, again, it looks like you can walk out all the way across there. I don't know if you can see further down there is um, Barrow. You can actually see the shipyard down at Barrow from here, where I was earlier on today. Um, but obviously you can't walk across there, it's very dangerous because uh, this is the Duddon Estuary. This is the third estuary I've circumnavigated today and I'm at the southern tip of my third little peninsula sticking out. So it's been a good day, it's been a tiring day, there's been a lot of uphills um, and I didn't realise <laughs> with all them bags on the back of my bike um, just how hard it would be. So I've called it quits here, it's still light, I could still probably travel for a bit more and wild camp somewhere else but I thought you know what I'll treat myself and yeah beautiful so I'm going that way tomorrow and finally I'm heading north with no interruptions so <laughs> tomorrow's that way and we'll see if we can get to Whitehaven see you tomorrow